Hello and welcome to Me and My Golf. We're your coaches, Piers and Andy, and it's time for the Impact Show. Now, we're super excited because we have another amazing coaching plan just for you. Andy, it's time for Break 90. It is, yes. Break 100 was fantastic, but now it is time for the next step, Break 90, where myself and Piers have put together a six-week plan where we personally guide you and coach you to Break 90. Here's a sneak peek of what you can look forward to. All we want you to do is practice twice per week and play a minimum of nine holes on the golf course. Yes, and this is week one. So after you've watched this, if you want to watch the rest of the coaching plan for free at meandmygolf.com, all you have to do is click the link in the description. So let's get started on this week's plan. Now it is absolutely crucial if we're going to work at your technique to help you break 90, we have to start with the setup. So we're going to look at the stance, the balance and the posture and actually go through some of the things that we see which cause you problems, but also the fixes on how to get better. So Andy, obviously it's really important, isn't it, to get consistent golf swings. Stance, what are we looking for? So stance obviously it's just really how we positioning the feet and i've got a, a seven iron here so let's go as a baseline really as a yes. guide for you so the stance is really important because it's going to set the foundation to really give you that good stability and balance so a great guide with a mid iron is going to be to get the heels a little wider than the hips and this is really as we said pierce going to set the foundation mm -hmm. allow for some stability and allow us to use the ground in, a, in the right way if we get the feet too close together we often see then some instability in the lower body, um, loss of power, and if we go a little too wide, really limits the rotation. So we've yeah. got to get it just about right, and a great guide to start from, as we said, is the heels a little wider than the hips, okay. again, for a mid-iron. So that's for, that's for a mid-iron. What about if we were to go longer and shorter, we can adjust it for that as well? Yeah, I mean, look, the longer we go, we need more power. So mm -hmm. if we're going to go to a driver, then we obviously go wider with the stance, gives us more used to use the legs. And then if we go more control and shorter shots, then obviously the stance gets a little uh, closer together because it's more about control then. But as again, mid iron upwards, we're gonna start with the heels a little wider, progressively moving out. Okay, perfect, perfect. All right, so from that then, balance. Balance. What sort of problems do we see? And it's really crucial, isn't it? It's often overlooked. Overlooked, yeah. So when we're talking about balance, we're really just talking about where the weight is distributed between the toes and the heels. Now, if we get the weight too much on the toes, then the problem is here, we're not gonna be able to use the ground as good as we can. It often leads to sort of falling forward. And if there's movement forward or backwards in the golf swing pierce, we compromise the strike. We're not gonna get the full energy to the golf ball. And really the consistency of that contact, like we said, is compromised. So from a heel, from a heel perspective as well, if we get too much on the heels, again, from here, we're gonna get a lot of forward movement, again, throwing things out. So where the weight is positioned from heel to toe, is massively gonna impact the consistency, not only in the, the strike, but also the, the, the energy that you're gonna to get to that course, golf ball. Of course, okay, so how can we give someone a, a really cool drill on how to get into good heel to toe okay. balance? So a lineman stick, and we did this in break, 100 pierce as well. These are crucial, aren't they? It so is. if anyone hasn't got any of these, it's well worth getting hold of some of these. Very useful, a couple would do great. So it's always, no matter what stage you're at, it's something that me, myself, and you will always Every check day. Where is the weight? Where is the posture? Are we in a good place to start with? Because then if we're in a good place, it's so much easier. So place the alignment stick right through the arches. Yep. Now what we're looking for here, we don't want to be too much weight in front of the alignment stick or we don't want to have too much weight behind the alignment stick. We want to feel that it's evenly balanced so the weight is directly through the arches and the feet. And if you do this, this is going to give you that awareness to go, okay, well, am I too much this way? Am I too much this way? You can really find the middle there. And from here now, that's really where we want to be. Because if we've got it in the middle, we can use the ground mm -hmm. in an efficient way. There's going to be less forward and move, uh, backward movement. And then we're going to find the center a little bit more often, which is always nice. Okay. And it's possible that you can hit golf shots off this as well. So it is okay to hit the golf ball from off these alignment sticks, but it really is a good place for you to, to, to practice, whether you're on the golf course, practice tee, or obviously at home yeah. or in the office. Okay, so um, posture. Let's posture. round it off with posture. What sort of problems are we seeing in the posture? Okay, 
problems in the posture. We're talking about really the spine angle mm -hmm. um, and we want to be in a neutral position with the spine where we can get um, the spine almost not straight but pierced but we, we often see where we get too much arch in the lower yes. back like this we call this S posture or we have too much curve in the in the spine like this we call this C posture and both of these can be damaging to the golf swing. We, we struggle to turn it can lead to back pain as well so yeah. getting the spine and the pelvis in a neutral position enables us again to use the body in the right way as well. well it's all about getting that hinge of the hips correct exactly. and actually engaging your core not to the point where you're tensing it you know really hard but just engaging it so as you said then it forms this area, forms the link between the lower body and the upper body, allows you to turn and rotate efficiently. So exactly. let's give us a drill. So how can okay. we get into a neutral posture? Because that's so what we're after. This is what we want you guys to do. Get a golf club, place it just behind you like so with the palms facing, uh, facing forward. We're going to take our stance a little bit wider than the uh, hips, standing nice and tall. Now from here, I'm going to engage the core a little bit and push my hands forward. Now from here. So we're, sorry, when you say you engage the core, so you're tensing your abs a little yeah, bit? Yeah, a little there. bit, okay. yeah. So from here now, I'm Hinging forward from the hips, really important. I go from the hips. You can see now my spine is nice and neutral. And then from here, I've just softened the legs now, again, to get the weight in the right place. The so I don't want to bend yeah. the legs too much and get the weight in the heels. I'm going to go forward, neutral spine, soften the legs to get the balance. And I'm now in a good position from here. Now, a key checkpoint, if you get on the driving range and you're working at your posture using the mirror or even recording your swing, we want to see that a good posture, if I were to draw a line vertically down at the back of the triceps, it will just pass in front of the knees and through the feet there, like so. If I'm too far away, you can see there, that line would be way in front of the toes. And again, it's yeah. gonna throw you off balance. So that's a great checkpoint if you are checking in the mirror or filming your golf swing. Okay, so let's get you back into a good stance, good balance, good posture, hit a shot, and then we can move okay. on. Right, so I can pretty much get straight into this pierce. Yes. But I'm just, go, times, yeah? I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna, I've done a few times, maybe a few too many. <laughs> so I'm just gonna hinge forward, get that feeling. Again, get the weight in the right place, feeling that neutral spine. And now I'm good to go. Very nice. And in balance as well. Now, as golf coaches, there's one thing that we'll universally agree on in that the pivot in your golf swing is crucial for consistency. So we're gonna talk about how to get a good pivot, but there is a swing foot which actually can inhibit that pivot. But before we get into that, the pivot, Andy, just actually explain exactly what that is, please. Well, look, when we're talking about the pivot, we're really talking about the hips and the torso and how we are really turning and winding up. And yeah. as golf coaches, Pierce, this is something, if we can get our students turning better, then generally the strike's gonna be better, they're gonna mm -hmm. be able to create more power and definitely more consistency. So there's one swing fault that we see the most, and that is really, I suppose it's a lower body swing fault, and that is the sway. So the majority of people, especially you guys who are watching this, you may struggle with a little bit of a sway in the backswing. So a sway in the backswing is when the lower body moves away from the target. Now, when we get this move away from the target, it limits the ability that we can actually turn. It also tends to move strike point, the bottom yes. of the golf swing, it moves that. And again, as we limit the ability to turn, it causes directional issues and power issues. So if we can have a better lower body motion, mm -hmm. that's gonna help the upper body motion as well and produce that consistency that we need. And the majority of golfers do this, okay, some so of it anyway. Let's just go with both hands on the club and just show everyone a sway when you do a full back swing and then show us a good movement. Okay, okay so, so there's, there's that sway. sway. Yep. Now show us the good movement. Okay, so the good movement is a nice stable lower body where we turn against that side and you can see there the lower body now is nice and stable, but I've made a good pivot, turn of the hips, and turn of the torso. Okay, and what I really hips. like about this here, Andy, is that your trail foot, your right foot, is flat on the floor. Often when people sway, that foot comes up a lot, and it really is as though you're playing catch up then in the rest of your downswing to get good strikes. Yeah. Okay, and look, the one thing we would say with this as well, I think a lot of people when they're trying to get a stable base, they really feel that the right leg, the trail leg, shouldn't bend, uh, sorry, 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 shouldn't straighten, should I say, but it can do that, can't it? Yeah, look, we want, we want to keep this stable, but we also want to be able to turn the hips. And if we turn the hips, you can see the right leg, it still has some flex in it, but you can see that it's, a, it's sort of straightened a little bit. It's straightened somewhat. And that's because we've allowed the hips to turn. And really important that we get the pelvis yeah. doing a good job. Okay, now the, the thing is with this, it is hard to understand whether you're swaying or not without actually videoing it sometimes. So we need to give you a drill, which can really give you that feeling and those checkpoints and visuals as you do it. So Andy. 
What have you got? Okay, couple of a couple of alignment sticks here. I'm going to place one on the ground at 90 degrees to the target line, and I'm going to place one through the belt loop. So this is great to do on the driving range in between hitting shots, and uh, give you a good feeling of what this pivot motion should be like. So one through the belt loops. All I'm going to do is place my trail foot on the outside of that one. I'm going to get this one across my shoulders in my golf posture. And now from here, this is what we want you guys to do. Stable base. And from here, we're going to rotate the torso and match the golf club up over the alignment stick there. Now you'll see roughly here, I've got about a 90 degree shoulder turn, approximately 45 degrees minimum we want from the hips. But this is a good pivot motion. If I sway now, you'll see hardly any rotation of these two pierce. And from there, I'm in sort of danger of struggling with a good shot yeah. there. So good wind up lower body and torso are matching the club up over the alignment stick from here now i've created a fantastic wind up and i can feel the pressure in the trail leg as well and the good thing is as well you know that if, if andy is swaying this isn't going to match up here and this alignment stick here if he sways he's probably not going to see out in front of him in this area here so it really is good from a visual but then you can get the feel of how this looks and then replicate when you hit the shot definitely so wind up you can really feel the movement there again my right leg is really on fire working hard there but you can see the hips as well there the pelvis i can see it in front of me inside my go. lead foot there great wind up of the pelvis and the torso together the shadow helps as well doesn't it, it? Does. just get the sun in the right place it does okay so now what we want you to do when you practice so your technical practice in week one is going to be going to the driving range twice hitting 50 golf balls both times and first and the second sessions are exactly the same so in those 50 golf balls, we need you to actually hit 10 clubs because we don't want to just work at one club. I think that's often we're guilty of just going with a seven iron and just hitting that. We want you to feel this pivot and good setup with all of the golf clubs. So as we said, we want you to hit 10 golf clubs, but after five shots, you are going to change to another golf club. But before you hit the next shots, you need to do at least three matchups. So, that makes sense hopefully to yourself, but it's really important that at this early stage, we really get used to getting a good pivot with the different clubs. By doing the matchups in between your sets of five, it's really gonna help you. Yeah, so I've done my three. He's done um, his three. I'm gonna take the alignment stick out at the way here then. You can come back to those in between your shots, or you could leave the alignment stick through your pelvis yes. and hit shots, but I'm gonna go without, and I'm gonna recreate the feeling now that I've just had. So good wind up again there. Yeah, that's the feeling I had with, with those alignment sticks in. And then I'm going to go into my first chunk of five golf balls, Pierce. I've got a uh, seven iron in my hands here. Okay. So again, just so seven the iron. same feeling. You hit five shots of this. And let's just go through all of them. And as he's doing this, I'm going to sort of have a look at him and make sure he's doing the right thing. That was a quite a nice shot. And I think it's really important that you don't just hit shots and don't do the matchup in between. Because if you don't do the matchup drill in between those shots, you're going to find that the feeling will wear off. This may be a new feeling for you. And if you just hit shots, you may literally hit the first golf ball really well, video it and go, look at that, I never swayed and I had a good pivot, but that feeling can wear off very early on. How, well, are these feel, how are these feeling, Andy? These feel good. So I think one thing that I feel different with me is that I tend to struggle. I don't necessarily load the right leg as good. Yeah. So the feeling for me I have in this is I can really feel myself loading against this right leg on this. So that's definitely a feeling that I can take to the shot. Okay, so this is someone who doesn't sway as well, but this drill is even helping him as well. So it isn't just necessary to fix a sway, it is just to improve your pivot, which is crucial. That one could be in pierce, that one could. No, I don't think so. Oh. It was close. Really? About it a was foot close. Away. Okay, a couple more, but I'm again, I'm getting the feelings here. Again, I'm going a little quicker than I probably would do in practice, yeah. but just for the, for the camera here. For the viewers. Don't want to send them to sleep, Andy. And I think, look, the key is from here, he's got a seven iron. Don't then go to a six iron. Go to a four iron. Then go to a pitching wedge. You know, really do mix it up. Obviously, you can hit the driver doing this as well. One last feel there on that one. This has got to be the best one. Okay. That third shot was pretty decent, though. That was the best one. Yeah, it was nice, wasn't it? Very good. Balance on that one as well, which is good. Good shot. Very nice. This week's task is for you to work out your carry distance. Now, the majority of golfers, and this means probably you, overestimate how far you think you hit the golf ball. So this week's task is to actually find out exactly how far it goes. And here are your three options. Yes, your first option is go and have a Trackman fitting. The fitter will give you all of your carry distances that you need. And don't worry if it's really windy because they can hit the normalized button. But make sure 
you assess how good your strikes are when you are doing this. Now, second option is to go to the driving range, but it's really important to understand you must be able to see where the golf ball lands, and also you need to know how accurate the markers and the golf balls are. So speak to the staff, they'll give you all the information that you need. And your third and final option, and our favorite, Andy, is to get out onto the golf course with a notepad, marking down your carry distances when you're on the golf course. If you can keep repeating this motion, you're definitely gonna get a consistent baseline for your yardages. Did you know from five to 10 feet on the putting green, the average on the PGA Tour is 53% of these putts holes. Now this may seem like a low number to you, but it's really important, isn't it Andy, that people don't have too high an expectation level on the shot. Yeah, and it's so easy to stand over one of these putts and if you miss it, be extremely disappointed. Or just think over this putt, I should hold it, I should hold it. The best players in the world are missing five out of 10. So don't let one of these ruin your round. It's okay to miss a few of these. Okay, so with that said, you're at six feet. Six feet. Do you think you can hold this? I'm feeling pretty confident, Pierce. But you're not thinking you should hold it, are you? Maybe you should. I'm okay with that. If we are going to get you to break 90, it is crucial you become a consistent putter. We go on the golf course with amateurs and we're holding our head in our hands and we're seeing so many shots wasted out on the course. So there's two main things we need you to be better at, controlling pace and controlling your start direction. So what we want you to do is every time you go and play golf this week, you must do a 15 minute warm up, a putting warm up. So we're gonna do this game here, the ladder drill, and then we have a start direction game as well. So Andy, obviously break 100, we did the ladder drill. We love this drill because it's great for pace control. Isn't yeah, and it? it's something that you just wanna continually do. And whether yes. you're trying to break 100, 90 or 80, it's a great pace control drill. And this is obviously the first level of this piece. It is, This it is the is. easier one, but it's a great starting point. Okay, so this is how you set it up. So we have a golf ball at every yard interval, five golf balls back. We have a two alignment sticks past the hole as the boundary. So I'm gonna get Andy to start now and I'll go through the scoring system. So you're gonna be doing this for 10 minutes. So if Andy knocks his ball in the hole, it's a birdie, he goes one under par. So he's one under par. If he leaves it short, it's a bogey. If he hits the boundary, it's a bogey. And if he leaves it in this area here, that's a par. So his objective is to finish level par or better. So he's two under, he's doing really well, but it is on the easy level for Andy. Let's see what he does with this one here. He goes three under. So obviously if you're leaving it short going past, we need to rein this in. So 10 minutes of this, what is your best score going to be? And note it down when you finish, what your best score is. That's a par for Andy, he's still three under. He's gonna to wanna to finish five under, four Ooh. under, sorry. That's another par as well. So three under, really good place for Andy. He probably needs to go up another level, but for you continuously do this for 10 minutes to figure out what your best score is. With your five remaining minutes on putting, we're gonna be very much working at your start direction on short putts. This is a really good way of recalibrating your stroke ready for the golf course. So five minutes of this, hitting the golf ball between the alignment sticks where it's running parallel to your target line on this straight putt, but you'll notice the gap we have between the tee pegs. You can make this as tight as possible if you want to, to make it harder, but make sure it's a challenge when you're hitting these putts. So you can see with Andy here, He's got a half a centimetre outside of the golf ball. So Andy's just going to hit five putts here. About a and six this, foot putt as well. It's about here. a six foot putt, yeah. So he's going to work very hard at getting the ball out the centre of the putter and hitting through these tee pegs. So really Andy, important that we've got the alignment sticks down here so I can put the ball in exactly the same position each time here. Now, yeah, you have to have those there every time. This sure. is a slightly right to left break, very slightly, so I've took that into consideration as well. Okay, so let's see you have a go at this. And this is, as we said, really good for calibrating the stroke before you get on the golf course. But it's also good for awareness and feedback. It gives you some idea of what you're doing because if you hit one of the tees consistently, then you know you've got a problem with your face aim when you're hitting putts. Did that one hit that tee then? Maybe no, no, that was, was good. okay, was it? Oh, it looked in the corner of my eye, but that was a good putt, it went in the hole. And information for you is key. If you're gonna make any changes, you need to understand what you're currently doing. Andy's doing a very I'm good job Doing okay this, so far, Pierce. Making it look very easy. And what I like about this, it just helps you sort of, like you say, recalibrate your putting stroke. And you know, the important thing in putting is if you choose your line, can you start it on that line? Of if course. you can start it on your line, then you're gonna hold more putts. Yeah, so if you're pretty decent at aiming the putter and then you can start on that line, then you're gonna be okay. Right, one more to go. Okay, one more. But again, five minutes of this, 
before you go out on the golf course. He's made that look. I'm ready. Easy. I'm ready to get out. I haven't even practiced that before. Your par three strategy is crucial if you want to break 90. Now it's the highest scoring hole amongst the best players in the world and often well protected by bunkers, mainly short, sometimes even water like this one here. So it's crucial you get the right strategy and also get the right club. So we've got a checklist for you guys to work on that's gonna help that. The first one is assessing the true yardage. So there's two ways of doing this. You need to pace out first of all from the T markers where you're hitting from to the measuring point on the hole very important that you do that. The second option you have is to use a measuring device. So you can use a range finder, a watch or a GPS app. We use the GPS 18 Birdies app, it'll give you all the information that you need. The second thing you need to do is to have a look at elevation and wind. So if you're hitting downhill, the golf ball will travel further. If you're hitting uphill, it will travel less distance. So really important you understand that in your club selection, but then the wind. Andy, with the wind, a lot of people really underestimate this. We don't want you to do this, so make sure you allow more for the crosswinds and into and downwind. And the third thing is that your tee placement is crucial. You have the opportunity to place the golf ball where you want, the only time on the golf course. So by doing this, you can actually make your shot into the green a lot easier. And then the last thing, when you're on the teeing ground and teeing the golf ball up, we often see people tee the ball too high, which means when they strike the golf ball, they hit it high on the face, which loses them speed, and it finishes short often in those hazards. Right then, Andy, 18th hole the Asprey. Can you go through this strategy and process now? Yes, definitely. So you're going to be my caddy. You've got I am going to be your caddy. Working there. So you can you just give me the yardages, please? Where, where are you going to tee up from, first of all? I need to know that first uh, Well, of I'm all. going to tee up over here. Okay, perfect. So let's get level there. Right, okay. So you've got 137 yards to the front, 156 middle, and 171 back. And I can give you the bunkers as well, but I'm sure you don't want to be thinking about that. And they're pretty much sort of pin high looking at this. Okay, case. so I don't want to be flirting with the front. So 137 front. 137 and front. And what's the middle? Uh, 156. 156. So let's say if I can hit this golf ball, let's say about 147, so yes. 10 yards past yeah. the front, it's going to give me a little bit of leeway. I don't okay. want to be anywhere near that front of that. Even front. though that flag is only a few yards on, you're not going to go for the flag? I'm definitely not going for the flag. I want to be <laughs> I want to be dry pierce and putting. Okay. So that's going to obviously take into account that. So 147 yards for me is normally in between a nine and an eight iron. Now the elevation, I'm hitting downhill, so that's going to take yardage off, Yes. but I have a little bit of breeze. So if I just have a look at this, it's into the breeze. So it's okay. almost cancelling out for me the downhill. Okay. So Makes what I'm going to do with this one, I'm going to hit, I'm going to sort of guide towards um, a slightly longer club, because again, I want to take out the danger, so I'm going to go with an eight iron. I yep. could get there with a nine, yep. but again, there's no prizes in being short no, on this no, one no. for sure. Okay. Okay. All right, let's, let's see you do it. And the, the good thing I like about this strategy is that although he's going to be hitting in the middle of the green and going to be 10 yards past the flag or maybe eight yards past the flag, it may be a harder putt, but he's aiming for the meat of the green. He's going for the biggest part of the green. And if it's a great shot to that, part, that point, he just has a long putt, that's all. Okay, so a little to the right of the flag as well. And there's no way he's going to be flirting with the water. So again, that's going to be past the flag. No danger of being anywhere near short there, past the flag. Yeah. And I've got to put to the hole there, Pierce. Yeah. I'm dry. That was simple, wasn't it? You should do that every time, shouldn't you? So before we finish this week's plan, we'd love to get your feedback. What did you enjoy most about this week? Let us know down below with any comments and questions. Yes, and here's a quick summary of week one's plan. We really hope that you enjoyed that. If you did enjoy it, please hit the like button. It allows us to reach more golfers and help them also. Yes, and if you want to take part in this fantastic six-week coaching plan, click the top link in the description down below. And we'll see you over there at meandmygolf.com to help you 